Hey guys, welcome back. This video is going to be about how to activate dev tools in PGI Assistant 2, and it's actually easier than you think. So what we're going to do here, yes, we're going to quit, is we're going to go into C. In this case, I'm on Windows 10, so Program Files x86, BJI Product, BJI Assistant 2, App Files, and you want main.js. Now I would suggest that you use edit with notepad plus um, plus because if you need you'll need to edit this with administrator uh, which notepad plus plus is great because it does that automatically. So we'll go up to the top. So the line that you want to edit is right here on line 113. So you're going to remove the double the uh, double slash for a comment, and it's going to become active. Save it, and you'll notice it says it needs to be saved in administrator mode. So yes, yes, we'll restart in administrator. It keeps the change. All we have to do is save it. Okay, that's the only edit you need to make here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start it up. And now notice you have this entire window on the side. Now what we're going to do is this line and this line both need to be changed. So debug becomes one. Hit enter when you're done, by the way. Uh, and debug enabled is true. Hit enter. Now, go ahead and plug in the Spark. I already have it powered on, so I'm just going to plug it right in. Okay, see it's over here. First, let's close out the window. So it's this little X in the top right. Now I'm going to make this big. Now, we're going to go into Spark. And now look at all of these options that we have. I'm not going to go over every single one, but there's quite a bit. And I believe the ones that are stock are firmware update, data upload, black box, and simulator. Everything from, uh, and Wi-Fi settings. So everything from FPV Live down to the end is all under debug. So, I mean, you're familiar with the, well, maybe you are, maybe you're not, uh, the standard first five. I haven't used every single one of these, so I'm not sure what all they do. Um, I'll go over some more things as I find them out. Uh, POF, I'm not sure what that stands for off the top. Uh, but again, there's lots of things that you can edit, but I would highly suggest, unless you explicitly know what a lot of this stuff does and what it'll do, don't touch it. Just realize that it's there, but I, I really wouldn't mess with anything. Uh, dashboard. I got to clear a few things in here. Everything's good. Okay. Basic settings. And if you'll notice up here on the top, like on this page, there's no tabs. They're not really tabs, but they're, it's kind of like an Android. So here's your mountings. Remote controller, PSC settings. Uh, you can select the airframe type if you have a different setup. Um, and obviously this one and this one are different. So even though they look like X's, they're not the same. Um, it all depends on what your setup is. But again, if you don't have to, don't mess with this stuff. Uh, flight settings, fail safe. Um, I haven't tried to set the return to home switch yet, uh, but I would suggest probably leaving that one alone. Uh, Failsafe action is return to home. You can set it to land where it's at or just hover in place. Uh, you can set the hover or the return to home altitude right from here. You get battery stats, which that is uh, that's probably pretty close to accurate actually. Uh, you can select what to do when you get to a low battery. Uh, you can select what to do at critical. 
and the battery type. That's something interesting. Uh, flight restrictions, which are the same things in the D DJI Go 4 app. Uh, IOC, I was curious about this one. So there's home lock mode and course lock, which is essentially headless mode like you, you probably hear on some other drones. Um, I was interested in how to get this one to work without the debug setting. I, I was kind of hoping that would be a thing, but uh, I'll have to look in the app a little bit more. Under tools, I really don't know what this is. I kind of dug into it for a minute, but I, I'm really not going to play around. Channels, I'm assuming it's some internal processor of some kind. Uh, shutter, unless you really know what you're doing and what this hardware is capable of. Again, don't touch it. DJI device, so landing gear, uh, the DRDK, and the gimbal, which has two types. Uh, something about ST SDK. Uh, I'm working on figuring out more about ground stations, so I'll do another video on that later. Uh, SDK failsafe actions, uh, what each thing does, and again, here's another uh, in the SDK, what would the failsafe be? Hover landing return. Under parameters, and you'll find a couple videos about this uh, all over YouTube, but in this absolutely massive list of, well, just about everything, um, you can change certain values to severely speed up the maximum speed of the spark and probably any other drone for that matter. But uh, I, I honestly, off the top of my head, I don't know what those settings are, and I'm probably not going to change them just because I don't really feel comfortable with that. But uh, there's a lot in here that it's, I guess if you know what you're doing, you could probably really tweak the, the, uh, the spark. But yeah, unless you're a really advanced user, this really isn't a good playground. Uh, Real-time flight data. I haven't tried this yet. IMU calibration. Uh, you could probably do it from here. Is what it sounds like. Actually, can't really tell. But uh, you just do the calibration if you're going to do it for the internal measurement unit um, from within the DJI Go 4 app, and just so you can set the drone the way that it tells you to, and it'll work better. And Vision Simulator, uh, which I think is the same as this simulator, I'm pretty sure. But that's all for this one. Uh, of course, if you close it and you go back in, it'll still be here because the setting was saved in that main JS file I said earlier. But every time you open it, you're going to have to change the debug and debug enabled lines to both one and true and then continue on, you know, close the window and continue in. So it'll disable by default, although it will show the window. So if you're if you don't want to see this anymore, I suggest reverse the process. Let's see, one files x86, DJI, system two, app files, main.js, add it with notepad. Sorry if that was really fast. Put slash slash space, put the comment uh, line back on. Save, yes, I'm done. Administrator, save, exit. And now if we go back in, now it's not there anymore. And if you go back into Spark, you'll notice you're back to your standard five settings. So. Hope you guys maybe can discover some new stuff with this. Uh, let me know what you find out. Uh, leave a comment if you'd like to have me test out certain functions or something, and I'll let you know if I'm comfortable and make another video for it. So hope to see you again in the next video. Like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.